usually when I do my Triple P stories, I'm already aware of the type of person or of the person that I'm doing the Triple P on. It's very rare that I come across one where I have no clue who the person is, never heard of them up until the point where I'm doing the Triple P on them. But one of my subscribers had left a comment under a community tab post that I made in reference to one of my uh, weekly polls. And they said, Sorian, it sounds like you might have another Triple P on your hands um, about this guy named Jason Phillips. And I said to myself, I heard that name in passing that same week. And sure enough, it was the exact same person in which the, my subscriber was telling me about. So this person, Jason Phillips, as y'all can see by this picture, you can clearly see he was at the quote unquote festivities on January 6th. And he's making his presence be known. He took a selfie, as you can see, and he has a whole bunch of people behind him. But if you look at the headline, it says that he died in a car crash. Now, let me just say this. The Triple P isn't necessarily about the car crash itself because that's tragic enough as it is. It's the fact that he was dumb enough to drive while under the influence. You heard that correctly. This guy was drunk while driving and it ended up costing him his life. And not only that, but the passenger also lost their lives too. And then it was somebody else in the back seat. Now, fortunately for them, they ended up surviving. And both he and the passenger ended up getting ejected from the car. They were driving a Tesla, or he was driving a Tesla. They both got ejected from the car because neither one of them had on a seatbelt. But the passenger who survived in the back seat had their seatbelt on, go figure. So he passed away at his own stupidity, and I feel absolutely nothing for him. And you wanna know what's even more interesting about this? Before I actually get into the article itself, you have his so-called supporters literally on there crying the blues about this guy. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, so you're not gonna think about the well-being, well, first off, the loss of life to the person that was beside him in the car, and not the and, uh, speed of recovery to the person that was sitting behind it, but you're focusing on giving well wishes to his family and condolences to him, and he was the one responsible for why he is now in the predicament that he's in now, as well as the person that was beside him that got ejected to, and the person who's currently recovering in the hospital. I'm sorry if, I'm not feeling any type of way. He died at the hands of his own ignorance and his own stupidity. And the only reason they're coming out and saying anything about him now or saying anything well wishes is because of who he was attached to. And wait until you find out the name of the organization he was a part of. It's like the jokes practically write themselves. The driver this week who was killed along with a passenger when a Tesla overturned had become known in the Fresno area for being a right-wing advocate who had a run-in with a city council member. Jason Phillips, who was also in the Washington DC on in Washington, DC on the day of January 6, 2021, insurrection was the 24-year-old driver, only 24, y'all. 24. Suspected of being intoxicated at about 1.45 a.m. Monday when the Tesla Model 3 collided with more than one guardrail, according to the Fresno County Coroner's Office. Phillips had a spot in the public eye going back to at least April 2016. Honestly, never heard of the guy. When Fresno B. Archives revealed a photo of him with the then Mayor Ashley Swear Reagan or Swear Regan, because he was a member of the Fresno Youth Commission. He would have been about 16 at the time. Phillips made the news in May 2020 when along with other right-wing protesters, Josh Fulford and James Hoke confronted Fresno City Council member Miguel Arias at his home over business closures early during the pandemic. Arias was cited and accused of battery during the incident, but charges were later dropped. Along with appearing in photos at the nation's capital on the day of January 6th insurrection, Phillips also defended Hoke, a Sierra Unified School District Board trustee who refused to resign after some constituents called on him to do so for his presence at the capital. Reached by text message Wednesday, Hoke declined to speak with the Fresno Bee about Phillips. Phillips also appeared often wearing a red hat in videos with Fulfer as a part of, in this, and get this y'all, this is the name of the organization. The Oreo Express. That's why I said the jokes practically write themselves because I wouldn't be surprised if he was the only black face in that organization. 
a self-described quote-unquote independent media source that focused on alt-right causes. Falford did not respond to a request to talk about Phillips sent Wednesday by email to the Oreo Express website. That included some of the weekly demonstrations outside the Tower Theater that went on for months in 2021, while Adventure Church attempted to buy it. A profile on X, formerly called Twitter, connected to Oreo Express mourned Phillips on Tuesday. We never know when our time will come to go home, the post said. You touched a lot of people's hearts, made lasting impressions on people's souls, and will be forever missed praying for your family in this tragic time. Again, the way that they're framing this guy, they're making it seem like he died of natural causes, like he maybe had some kind of life terminal illness, but the guy literally got in a car in a Tesla under the influence drove wild erratically without his seatbelt on and ended up getting injected from his vehicle along with somebody else who died along with them and then had and then someone else got injured along with in that crash and they expect us to feel sorry if you look at anybody who is offering condolences to him none of them bring that up they like i said like i said they frame it as if this guy just died of natural causes like he had again like a life terminal altering illness but that wasn't the case. Let them tell it the, the way they're framing it. That's what it sounds like. But that's definitely not the case. Phillips was believed by officers to have been the driver in the crash that killed him in front seat passenger Chase McCutcheon, who was 32, according to the California Highway Patrol. Both men were not wearing seatbelts and were ejected. Officers Mike, si Mike Salas said Wednesday that evidence at the scene showed Phillips was driving, adding the investigation was ongoing and the findings were not final. Salas said investigators believe the men were at local drinking establishments observing St. Patrick's Day on the night of the crash. A 37-year-old passenger in the backseat survived the crash with moderate injuries. All three were in a Tesla 3 model at about 1.45 a.m. Monday when the vehicle struck a curb, a guard rail, and sign before flipping on Copper Avenue while going west and approaching a shift in the road near Willow Avenue, CHP said. The car was moving at a high rate of speed and continued into another curb and guardrail. Phillips and McCutcheon were pronounced dead at the scene. After reading all of that, does that sound like someone you should feel sorry for? I don't, because in my honest opinion, that was just straight up reckless behavior. He's where he's at right now because of his own doing. I do not feel any type of way about this dude, and based on his affiliations, he probably has some anti-blackness about himself and uh, for others, other black people as well, considering the company he went out for and the company that he kept or the company he chose to have around him or be around. So it is what it is. I cannot feel bad for anybody who puts themselves in this kind of position. Now, what is bad enough that he was already driving under the influence and you know that crash happened and he lost his life and someone else did, but what if someone else on the street lost their lives too? Then what? I think what gets me and pisses me off the most about this story is not necessarily just the fact of the incident and the accident itself, not because of, he of who he chose to be around because at the end of the day, He's a grown man or was a grown man. He could hang him around whoever he wanted to be. It's the fact that his supporters are overlooking the fact that this guy was very reckless with what he did and he caused his own death and he caused the death of the person that was sitting in the seat next to him, albeit the person holds some responsibility too because they weren't wearing their seatbelt. Now, how ironic that the person who did wear their seatbelt was the one that survived. Isn't that saying that even though he shouldn't have been driving under the influence, if he would have wore his seatbelt, there's a good chance he probably would have survived. I mean, I'm just saying, it would have kept him from being ejected. What's the odds that the person who wore their seatbelt wasn't ejected, but the two that were not wearing were ejected? I mean, come on, y'all. Let's really connect the dots here. So again, I feel absolutely nothing. It is what it is. This is the first time I ever heard of a Jason Phillips before ever in my life. I never heard of this dude before today. And after today, this will probably be the last time you will ever hear me talk about him.